Ironized Yeast presents Lights Out. Everybody. It is later than you think. Lights Out brings you stories of the supernatural and the supernormal, dramatizing the fantasies and the mysteries of the unknown. We tell you this frankly, so if you wish to avoid the excitement and tension of these imaginative plays, we urge you, calmly but sincerely, to turn off your radio now. My name, Arch Obler. Tonight, a story I enjoyed writing for you because, well, frightening as the thought may be, it could happen. And furthermore, I might speak frankly, my dear Diane, the basic thing wrong with woman is her nose. Let's cut it off. Russell Adams. Then there's the matter of her ears. Look at them. Well? They're, they're, they're too obvious. Cut them off, too. No nose, no ears. Oh, a fine art critic you turned out to be. Oh, is this thing odd? Ross Adams, I hate you. I think it's the best piece of sculpture I've ever done. Egomaniac. Oh, will you go away? <laughs> Not until I tell my wife how much I adore her. <laughs> how about stopping the artistic endeavors for the night and romancing with the old man? Any night. Come on. Out of the veranda, there's a moon. Spoken as Professor Russell J. Adams, instructor of astronomy at our beloved university. <laughs> I don't know a single scientific fact about this moon. It's a special satellite built entirely for romance. <laughs> then it's a date. After you, fair Diane? <laughs> Why do you laugh? Just thinking it's a good thing we haven't any neighbors, or they'd think we were honeymooning. Ten years and two more weeks. Sweet. Why? For remembering. <laughs> <sighs> Where the sign? <sighs> It's such a lovely night. Yes. You're very lovely with the moonlight in your hair. Darling. 335 days out of the year, moonlight to me is uh, is just a reflected light of the sun. A light interesting only that it may be analyzed spectroscopically. <laughs> but these 30 days of our vacation, Diane. Oh, what a magical change. It's a soft lover's moon hanging in the heavens only to brighten your loveliness. Oh, and people wonder why I can't get excited about Ronald Coleman. Coleman? Who's he? <laughs> Spoken like a true professor. He's a motion picture star. An absolute paragon of romance. Oh, well, perhaps I should not neglect my movie going. Oh, so much I mean. With such paragons to teach one. Mm, you do all right. Oh, Russell. What's the matter? I saw the brightest shooting star. Is that all? <laughs> the way you gasp, I thought you saw the angel of death himself galloping over those meadows. There's another one. Look, Russell. My dear, for 11 months out of the year, the heavens have my full and undivided attention. Oh, but during this blessed month, <laughs> let the heavens fall, I can't be bothered. I never saw such bright shooting stars. Yes, and another thing, my dear. As the wife of an accredited professor of astronomy... I think it no more than fitting than you give the phenomena that you observed its proper name. Namely, the fall of a meteor. There's another one. And another. Oh, Russ, how bright and beautiful. They travel at such a tremendous rate, the friction of our atmosphere burns them into a fiery vapor. There's more of them. Look, one after the other. I've never seen so many shooting stars. Uh-uh. I mean so many meteors in all my life. Oh, so that's why you wanted me out here. <laughs> you knew about this uh, meteor shower, didn't you? It's one of heaven's free spectacles in this constellation. Every three years, and this happens to be the third year. How frightening. Why frightening? Those great masses of stone and iron coming from who knows where in interstellar space, traveling millions and millions of miles, and then going up in such glorious flame just as they reach the end of their journey. Not all goes to flame. Hundreds of them strike the earth each year. Oh, Russell, there's no danger. Oh, no. The probabilities of being struck on the head by that cosmic rubbish is about uh, a thousand times more remote than winning a sweepstake without buying a ticket. Oh, look. That one. The brightest of all. Wait, Diane. What's that? I don't know. Something from look the up. sky. It's shooting star. Look out, Diane. Russ. All right, 
right, dear. Everything's all right. What? How? A meteor. It must have landed out in the field there. Here, let me help you up. You all right, dearest? Yes, I, I'm all right. Russ, where are you going? Out there. Where it must have buried itself. Wait here. I'll be right back. No, no, I'm going with you. All right, if you want to. Oh, Diane, what an experience we've had. The one chance in a million I spoke about almost occurred to us. But, but Russ, was it really a shooting star? That explosion like a bombshell? A bombshell of the universe. What will we find out there? A fragment of the meteorite, I But hope. it'll burn. No, no. All of its heat will have been dissipated. Then again, it may have exploded into a thousand minute pieces. I pray to heaven that it hasn't. I'm afraid. No, no. The danger's all over. Ah, uh, here. The moon's so bright. If any of the mass landed, I should be able to find the torn ground where it smashed through the turf. Oh, please, darling. Let's wait until morning. No, no. I must find the thing at once. The moon gives plenty of light. From the brightness of the flash, I'm positive that the meteor landed someplace right in here. I'll tell you... Look! What? The turf, all torn up. This is the place. Russell, are you mad? Get up off the ground. Right here. It must have struck a glancing blow off the brow of the ridge. I've got it. What? A fragment of it. Still warm. See? No larger than a baseball. All that was left of it. That's a... That's a meteor. A meteor, you're right. All that's left of the meteor that burned and exploded. What a fine. Drop it, Russ. What are you talking Throw it about? away. Yeah, come back to the house, please. What, what are you going to do with it? Diane, what's the matter with you? Your face. I, I don't know. I, somehow I'm afraid for all of us. Afraid? Good heavens, my dear, there's nothing dangerous about this. A mass of metal that's 90% iron. Why, it's as harmless as any inert piece of metal. Come to the study. I'll show you where the rush of air against the incandescent... Uh, Russ, metal... wait. Huh? Someone's crying. Yes. I'll go and see. Helga. Oh, Helga, you poor thing. We forgot all about you. Oh, Mrs. Adam, it was exploding. Now, now, everything's all right, Helga. What's going on, Diane? Oh, poor Helga. The explosion frightened her out of her wits. Oh, Mr. Professor Adam, we die. We all die. Don't be a the fool. The fire it come from the sky. It kill us. It kill you and me and everybody. We die. Everybody stop it. Die. Stop it. For heaven's sake, stop that. Sky. Take care of it, Diane. Give her a sedative or something. All right, Russell. All right now, Helga. Everything's all right. Now. I'm going to get a, at this meteorite, so please quiet the dumb fool down as quickly as you can. Superstitious idiot. Simple phenomenon, and she thinks the world's ending. Huh. Simple little meteorite. Iron, a bit of nickel content. Nothing particularly unusual. Oh, Diane, quiet her down, will you? Yes. She'll be all right. Mm, you look a little rocky yourself. Here, sit here. She's very frightened. Yeah, and even you, Diane. Well? Well, you've acted so strangely, as if this in that piece of cosmic metal could cause some supernatural ability. Huh. What are you going to do with it? Nothing. Examine it. Here. I'll take some of this nitric acid. Huh. Where's that bottle? Huh. There we are. Now watch closely, and I'll show you that the stone consists of ordinary elements. Iron. Russell. What? This, this mark on it. How strange. Hmm. Yeah. Funny I hadn't noticed it before. Circles the entire stone. I wouldn't be a bit surprised that a blow right here would break it in half. Yes, I think I'll try to do that. No, no, Russ. Leave it alone. Good heavens, Diane. Nothing but a stone. All I'm going to do is try and break it along this fissure. Get yeah, a hammer. Ah, yeah. What if the stone break? Almost solid metal. I'll try. By George, it did. Clean in half. <gasps> what? Look. What's inside? Flash. Oh, Russell. Negative gray protoplasmic. Oh. No, it can't be. It can't. This is a meteor. It came from out there. There is no flesh. Nothing could live. Russ, look. Huh? It's growing. Growing? Ladies and gentlemen, a shooting star flashes out of the sky and falls to Earth. And in it, something living from out of interstellar space. Yes. Yes, this is the time to take a breath before going on with tonight's Lights Out play, the story of Professor Adams and his wife and the thing from out beyond our world. A meteorite had fallen, and Professor Adams had broken it open, and there was a gray nugget of flesh inside, which 
even as the professor and his wife stood watching, began to grow. Faster and faster. Gray flesh. Growing. Oh, Ross, I'm afraid. No, Diane. No, wait. Control yourself. This is something we've got to see, both of us, calmly, so we can tell others clearly what we saw. I'll try. Oh, Russ, keep your arm around me. Larger and larger. Listen, the noise as it grows. I hear it. When will it stop? When? Look. Look. Uh, I can't. That horrible gray flesh. But you must see it. Look. It's forming into something. What? A head. It's forming into a head. Oh! How can it be, Diane? Flesh in a meteor growing. Growing into a head. I see it. A head. Horrible head. <gasps> Diane, you heard. Yes. But a head without body speaking. Yes, speaking. Russell. You... You hear and and understand me? His lips laughing. I laugh at the fear and wonder in your simple little faces. Who, who, who are you? Who, what are you? If I told you, would your little earth signs understand? Uh. Tell us. Whatever you are, tell us what you are. What you on earth will soon have for masters. Right. No, 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 wait, Diane. I must know. You thing... Uh, what can I call you? Tell me what you mean, you masters. Surely you simple little men do not think that in you creation has reached the ultimate. No, oh. Gray flesh talking. I'm getting out. You will stay. Russ, I I can't move. <laughs> nor nor I. You cannot move. Who are you? Tell us, who are you? You saw how I came. A tiny bit of protoplasm in that meteorite? So I willed myself to be. To reach your earth. You... You came here in that? Through... Through space? Through space beyond your furthest conception. Earth thing. Many of my people have tried. I am the first to succeed. Then... Then... Meteors are... Uh, are the means we have used to try and reach this haven of plenty. I am the first. Now there will be others. No. You, you're from another planet? An old world. Old beyond your understanding. A world grown cold in its age. Empty with passing years. We must escape to a young, fertile world. This world. But, uh, but you're only heads. Heads without bodies. Oh, Russ. Russ, I'm so afraid. No, 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 please. I must hear him speak. This that is happening to us is a miracle of all times. Tell me, you there, are you only heads in that world you speak of? Heads. Heads. You see... What I will you to see. But what are you? A mind and a will beyond your feeble understanding. As far above you as you are above the apes that still must crawl in your jungle. Oh, but, but how can it be that you speak as I speak and understand what I say? Your prattling wearies me. But I tell you this. All that you say, I know. The most profound thought any of you earth things have ever thought 
is to me as the babbling of children. But now I am hungry. You understand that little thing? Hungry? Hungry? Hungry with a hunger that has driven me over space without ending. Hunger that has brought me here. But, but what do you eat? You will know. What do you, what do you mean? What food could there be here to fill the hunger of such as I? Hunger that would make me entomb myself in metal, flung into space in a hope that chance would bring me through the fire of that air of yours. What food that thing... I don't know. Tell, tell me. Come closer, Earth thing. Oh, no. And why, oh, no, Earth thing? You don't... Human? Human. <laughs> you think you crawling worms are human to us. But, but if you're men... But we are not men. You are the cattle, and we are the keepers. Oh. You raise the cattle for life, and we for centuries have raised such as you on our world for life. But now, as I told you... Our world has grown too old and too cold. The herds of you die and we grow hungry. That is why I am here. We need new cattle. Here there are so many of you. Earth woman. Russell. It spoke to me. We've got to get out of here. Earth woman. No, no. Stop it. Don't look at me. Stop it. Come closer. No, no. Don't listen to him, Diane. Closer. No, no. Don't move, Diane. Stay where you are. Stay right there. You hear only me, Earth woman. Only you. No, Diane. No. Don't say that. Don't look at that monster, Diane. Closer, Diane. Yes. No, Closer. No, Diane. Stand still. Don't move toward it. Don't. Closer, Diane. No, no. Then. Closer. Monster. Not Diane. Diane, I beg of you. Don't go closer to it. Closer. No. Closer. No. I'll kill you. Closer. If I could only get to you. Close. Soon you will move to me as she no. is closer. No. Diane, closer. if I could move. Closer. Diane, closer. I've got to find the way. Closer. The strength to stop him. Closer. Diane, you're almost... Closer. I've got to. Closer. That bottle. Nitric acid. Closer. The bottle. Yes, close yes, me. close to you, monster. Oh. Take this. A pool of flesh. Flesh. That's all. Diane, wake up. Open your eyes. I've killed the thing. I killed it. Oh, no. Diane, it's all right. Russell. Oh. I've killed it. Oh. Diane, look. Outside, it's still dark. Yes. The sky's still streaked with the Russian meteorites. And that thing said more of the monsters of his breed are trying to reach this earth. To feel that 
devil's hunger in him. Another meteorite is just fell. And in it, perhaps... Oh, Diane. Diane. Is that truly to be in for mankind? Hmm. I, um... Mr. Obler, will the end of the world come that way? Well, Frank, if, if you mean will the end for mankind come out of interstellar space in the form of a flying meteor, well, there are some mighty interesting theories along that line. The amazing thing about it, Frank, is that there are so many logical and thoroughly possible ways in which the entire tribe of mankind could be wiped off the Earth at any moment. I, I'm not talking about famine or what's close to all of us, war. I mean other ways. A star moves into our darkness from somewhere out there in the blackness of interstellar space, and the pull of its presence might turn our spinning globe headlong into the sun. In a split second, all of mankind, all his buildings, his wonderful possessions, his precious little pile, would go up in a flash of fire. Or, out of the sun itself, the very source of our life, as we all know, could shoot a long stream of explosive flame that would curl around us and again... Well, so quickly that no man would know what had happened. In split seconds, this earth would be a charred, uninhabited spheroid. Yes, when one stops to think what a tiny little grain of sand this haughty world of ours actually is in the dark sea of space, and when we realize how precarious little mankind's hold is on this earth, the spectacle of man's inhumanity to man becomes a cosmic joke. Well, all of those things are certainly interesting to think about, Mr. Obler, but... Tell us now, what's going to happen next week? Next week, Boss Triest. No, that's not a dance. It's a story of chance. That unpredictable chance that makes one man a saint and the next man a Hitler. The flip of a coin, the turn of a card, the bend of a road. I think you'll like what we have to offer you, but as usual, next week. Lights Out will come to you again next Tuesday at this same time. Be sure to listen to Arch Obler's weird story of Boss Triest. Thank you.